Kathleen Crochetti is a multimedia artist from Watsonville, California, who lives in this great old Victorian her family has renovated. Kathleen's work usually involves public participation and an affirming message, often recycling materials into new, meaningful, and interactive pieces. Oh, wait a minute. That's not enough. The fact is, I am in awe of how prolific this artist is. And in so many mediums. The workshop she shares with her husband is ready for anything, and the output is remarkable. Many, many projects have come out of this workshop. And she loves teaching her lucky students at Mission Hill Middle School. She runs the visual arts program for the city of Santa Cruz, and for her dedication, Kathleen was named an Art Teacher of the Year by the California Art Education Association. Her family is very supportive and they're very close. And they often get involved in her work. I'm going to make art and it's not going to be... Um, I show it. It's really important to show it and to get it out there because for me it's all about communicating. Selling would be nice. Selling, when selling happens, it's very nice and I'm quite happy about it, but it's not the main thing. Sometimes there'll be lapses in where I'm not in the studio. It gets to be the point where my family feels it too. And my, my son will say, Mom, how long has it been since you've been in the studio? They'll just, they'll gang up on me as a family and say, go to the studio now. You're too crabby, too cranky. We don't want you around until you're feeling better, so go. And they make dinner, or they clean the house. It's a really great family I'm in. <laughs> and for them to recognize that without studio time, I can just be a mess. So they make me take it if I don't take it myself. <laughs> so it's always been that way, creativity? Um, yeah. Be vented. We go on vacation, and, and I have a little tiny bag for clothes, and big bag of stuff. You know, I'm going to hand sew. My book comes along because if ideas come, I've got to write them down. So, you know, we're sitting in the middle of the desert and it's just beautiful all around and my heart rate is supposed to go down. I'm supposed to empty my mind and just be there. But on my lap, there's always something. I'm like working because <laughs> it's just the hands have to go. Well, Bev, there is no doubt that AIDS has hit the arts community especially hard. So one local artist is remembering friends and loved ones who have died from the disease. Kathleen Crochetti has created 12 of these human-like cocoon figures. Each one represents a different discrimination. You know, AIDS is just one problem that, that we need to uh, be more aware of and, can, and work on. But Kathleen is giving the forgotten their voice back. Each cocoon is shedding layers. It's a transformation, a sign of hope. Kathleen likens it to a caterpillar who emerges as a beautiful butterfly. And for anyone who has felt discriminated against, whether it's related to HIV or not, Kathleen invites you to sign the cocoon and come out of your shell. Nearby, a house has been turned into a gallery. But for a recent exhibition, artists created environments which used the rooms in their original context. Kathleen made a narrative dining room. On the walls hung portraits of the people whose family stories were contained on these CD players. Visitors could sit at the various place settings and listen to many dozens of stories. This installation of Kathleen's at the Monterey Art Association was the result of an encounter with an unexpected source. An elderly man had been a documentarian for decades, resulting in 58 carousels of slides. 
a beautiful example of someone who gave great deference and dedication to the creative impulse. It happened sort of as a fluke. A neighbor was having a yard sale. I'm looking around and I bought a slide projector and a screen and I was talking to the, um, the older gentleman who was having the sale. I asked him, where's all the slides? He says, oh, they're in a closet in the house. You want to see? Floor to ceiling in a closet were boxes and boxes of slide carousels. And I said, oh my gosh, what are you going to do with these? Well, it's kind of a problem because Ethel May and I were moving into assisted living home and there's not much room there. So, and I said, well, Ernie, I'll buy them from you. And there were 58 carousels that he turned over to me. And I said, thank you. And went home and started looking at them. I was just, I looked at them two or three times in completion, all 5,800 slides and didn't know really what to do, what to make of it because Ernie was a documentarian. He did this amazing thing. They were all about his trips with his wife. He and Ethel May have been married a long time and they like to travel. And the slides would start out Ethel May and the travel agent and they'd be looking at travel books and there'd be a slide of that. And then it would be a slide of their tickets. And then Ernie would type out an itinerary for every day that they were going to be gone. Oh, I love it because every day at 5.30 there was always cocktails. And then it would be their tickets. Ethel May packing, Ethel May standing at the door with all her bags, Ethel May getting in the cab, paying the cab driver when they got to the airport, the smiling lady who's checking their tickets, and the security people, the ramp, and the stewardesses and the pilots, everybody on the airplane, waves and smiles at Ernie, and assigning them the seats on the airplane, the airplane food after he was done. I mean, it just on and on and on. It took 80 slides finally see, welcome to Hawaii. So I'm looking at these slides thinking, oh my God, they're so amazing. And how can I get the public to sit long enough and to see this? I came up with an idea for an installation. So I made these little mat board holders and in each holder is one of Ernie's slides. The piece was really about life cycles, starting and beginning and turning in on itself. Ernie did get to see the show, which was very nice, and he was, he was appreciative and happy that it happened. Having a workbook has become an important tool where Kathleen's many ideas can land. After years of using the backs of envelopes to jot down ideas, keeping an organized book has become indispensable in her relationship with the muse. I said I better organize this thing so I put these little colored dots here and the red is contact information and yellow is promotional etc etc green ideas not completed I love going back and rechecking the green things I'm currently working this red dress over here is going to be on my model Leticia and um, Leticia's information is here this is a the start of some work for the Seven Sense Fashion Show. Like you have six senses, but the fashion show, it brings up another sense altogether. These go on the back side, and um, I'm just gonna hold it up here. Leticia, one of my models, she's got a firefly butt under this dress here. Ah, uh, but of course. The theme of this piece was a Cinderella story where the cinderfly gets actualized by getting her posterior illuminated. Kathleen has participated in many annual Seven Cents shows with dresses made of CDs, of uh, gap labels sewn together to make fabric, which becomes clothing. Here's a fiber optic collection with the theme of the Emperor's New Clothes, which was shown during the Bush era. This is my last piece coat that's left. What's happening here with the piece coat is these are ribbons, and on the ribbons are wishes. Life gets too much. I like to sit and think, but most often I just sit. And these ribbons, participants in First Night in Santa Cruz, First Night is a family celebration for New Year's Eve, and it's done in cities all across the country. And so I'm an artist that gets hired by First Night to make installations that are 
participatory in nature. And so I generally do something that has something to do with resolutions or wishes. Now, a couple years ago, I made a loom, and the loom was 80 feet long by 8 feet tall. And people wrote wishes for the new year on um, these ribbons and then wove them into the loom. So then I took these wish strips and sewed them into fabric. And then a friend and I made these really great coats, which are reversible. And during the shows, people actually reversed them. And they have these peace signs on the inside. Isn't that cute? There were 11 coats. That's an installation, public, site-specific, uh, participatory thing that I've done that then later turned into a performance piece. So that happens a lot. Another of the community-oriented projects Kathleen conceived is the Counting Lives Lost installation, which was a physical representation of the number of casualties to date in the Iraq War. Numerous volunteers pitched in to install the figurines in which the brown figures represented the 92,000 Iraqis and the white the 4,200 Americans who have lost their lives in this conflict. I really love school, I love learning, and then so I decided to get a master's degree in fine art, and I got that from Vermont College. So we're having this critique, and um, there's like 12 students, a regular professor, part of the program, and a visiting artist. Science-specific installations are okay, but public participation? You know, they're not going for that, that, that I'm trying to communicate to people other than those who would go into a gallery. So I was always having that battle. So I had ice sculptures. They're giant ice babies. Some of the people who are willing to battle with me are part of this critique group. And one of them says, so what's your medium anyway? And I hadn't expected that question. and so. I didn't really have an answer. I mean, I work in ideas. You know, I, whatever idea comes to me that needs to be expressed, then I find the material or the medium that works. And so this is what's going through my head, and I'm trying to, I can't pin it down. And the visiting professor pops up, and he says, her medium is hope. And, um, that was like the best thing that happened to me at graduate school. Well, that and then um, my class nominated me to be the graduation speaker. But I think that it is that thing about wanting people to interact with each other and that the little thing that I do with the little thing that you do and each of us contributes a little and it becomes this amazing whole. So.